in the area of pharmaceuticals and pharmacy benefits were concerned about the rising cost of drugs. Um, over 50% of the drugs being approved by the FDA now are, are high cost specialty drugs. Drugs that provide management and sometimes a cure for diseases for which we did not have in the past. For example, the CAR-T therapies where we can actually uh, cure cancer at a genetic level. Now, when we consider the, the cost effectiveness or value of these products, we have to consider the long-term lifetime, even societal costs or productivity costs. These are decisions we haven't made at a healthcare plan or a PBM level uh, in, in, the, in the past. We consider a direct medical costs, what we're actually paying for, and we typically don't consider quality of life or long-term societal values. So we've made some changes, and part of that has been assisted by the pharmaceutical company in coming to, coming to the market with drugs with with value-based prices, but also uh, outcomes or performance-based uh, risk-sharing contracts where there's literally a money-back guarantee, that's a simplistic approach, if the, the drug fails to perform according to the contract and the labeled indication. So uh, I think the pharma company uh, has, has stepped up to some degree in order to help us improve the value by uh, reducing the overall net cost of paying for uh, a disease over a year period of time, for example. Again, the outcomes contracts are, are very common in, in the UK and, and EU, of course. On the surface, performance or outcomes-based risk-sharing arrangements with pharmaceutical companies uh, sound like a win-win for both. There is earlier access for pharma companies on, on drugs, and uh, the payers have some risk-sharing by, by pharma companies if drugs fail to perform. Uh, what we've learned is that these contracts are easy to discuss, very difficult to execute, because they rely upon having uh, agreement and access to the data required to measure the outcomes of drugs. Now we have some administrative claims data that are easily available. However, we look uh, deeper in terms of the outcomes. Uh, sometimes these data are very difficult uh, to obtain. Uh, the other uh, consideration is that patients have a role in this. If patients don't take their drugs, uh, I don't think the pharma companies can be held responsible for a drug that fails. It's the patient that failed, not the drug. And we know that about half the patients stop taking chronic care medications after about six months. So part of that is a requirement for the patients to, to take their medication or perhaps an adherence program, or the pharma companies uh, simply uh, re require that for any outcomes-based contract payment, uh, patient adherence must be uh, required.